Wake up with the news and information you can trust. Starting your day the right way with the Andy Griffin Show. This is News Radio 890 92.5 KDXU. Happy Friday to you, 908 on KDXU. If you've got something on your mind and want to spout off about it or vent or whatever, you're always welcome to call at 673-5890. 673-5890. And you can text me if you don't like to, if you don't want to be on the air, but you do want your topic to be heard. It, uh, my, my text line, this is my personal cell phone, 435-467-5842. And by the way, I get criticized all the time by, by my fellow radio professionals. They're like, I can't believe you give your phone number out over the air. What is wrong with you? And uh, you know what? I see people give their number. Mellows, yours is probably out there in the public domain because you're mm-hmm. a realtor, right? Yep, everywhere. So it's out there. I'm not a. Fr- I mean, and they're like, "Oh, that's so unsafe that you would give that number out." I'm like, "What is a bad guy going to track me because they have my number?" And then you know, I don't know how they'd have access to tracking me unless they have find my friends and I'm one of their friends and I approve it and. Or are they going to? I I don't I have a, they they have like a remote control to blow up my phone. Or I don't know. I don't know how that could be harmful to me. Yeah, but. it's easy to block your phone nowadays, like a phone number if they harass you. I'm not going to give my address out, although I don't think I don't feel unsafe in St. George giving you know having people. I mean, you could find where I, if you really want to know where I live, you could find it. Trust mm-hmm. me. So I can tell them how I'm a realtor. <laughs> yeah. Have you? You haven't been to my house though. No, you haven't had me over for the barbecue. You talk about no, it. No, we time. need we need to do that for sure. I've got uh, I've got uh, we've got a cute little pool in the back. It's a perfect time of year for swimming, and uh, I will smoke some meat. Uh, I have what one of my favorite things to smoke in recent times has been you take a ham, but you don't smoke a ham like smoked ham. You smoke it with the purpose of it becoming like pulled pork. So it's pulled mm. ham basically. And uh, you sm- you smoke it longer, and you you buy it r- you buy it uncooked. Most of the ham we buy now is, is pre cooked. Sure. But if you can find it uncooked and then smoke it for twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen hours, uh, and then it almost literally falls apart, and you just use a little bear claw things to tear it, you know, to make it pulled. And then I like to cook mine that, that last little segment with the pineapple uh, habanero mm. uh, barbecue sauce, and yeah. That sounds good. I like to do the baked beans in the smoker. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's one of the one of the things I discovered in the smoking world. Yes, you better basic, you know, master the basics like ribs and and pork and brisket and stuff. But uh, a real good smoker will have a repertoire of uh, side dishes: baked beans. Mm-hmm. I uh, want to learn the mac mac, mac and, and cheese. cheese. I, I do smoked mac and cheese, mm-hmm. and uh, so there's an argument in the mac and cheese community: Do you pre cook the noodles before you put them in? To smoke with the cheese or do you have the smoke you know immerse them in the cheese mixture and have them smoke you know uncooked until they're cooked and Mm. that's that's a pretty good argument going there too about that so time to start smoking too it's nice and cooler or cooler yeah yeah it's Mm -hmm. it's not cool no in the morning it's not as hot in mornings are nice yeah Mm -hmm. Although today, so yesterday, yesterday I think it was, it was like 63 in the morning. It was uh, almost borderline cold, if you talk to my wife anyway. Uh, but um, today it was 74, basically. 73, 74 was the low. That's not borderline cool. That That's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice, but it's not cold. Yeah, that's like San so. Diego weather, though. I like that weather. Welcome to the show, by the way, Mello. It's good to see you. Oh, thank you. We're still fighting to try to get you on every day. Uh, but uh, it's a battle that, so if, you know, if we were to lay odds on this one, you know, it's like 80-20, that, <laughs> but I'm fighting. I used to be 95-5, right. you know, so now I, I've gained 15%. I've gained ground. But, That's good. Uh, That's and, good. And you hosting while I was gone helped. That's fantastic. Because I think uh, hopefully they started to realize, you know what, she, she is pretty valuable. So <laughs> I think you are. Well, thank you. I love it. So, it's fun to be here. Loved having you. I wanted to talk a little bit about... Confidence and courage. All right. So we all have our things, right? That we're, we kind of feel bad about ourselves for this, that, or the other. It's the self image. You will talk about it. I know you had to crawl out, not literally, but figuratively out from under a rock after your previous husband beat you down mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit. And maybe not physically beat you down, but mentally beat you down for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, to me, you are a pretty confident lady now. And I like that. Yeah, I, feel I, more I think that confidence is attractive, mm-hmm. uh, not only to, to the opposite sex, but also to 
other people. People want to be around someone who is confident. Yeah, without and, being cocky. Yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. and it, and it it uh, you can't really fake confidence. You can fake it at first for a little while, but confidence is a real thing. For instance, if if I were to ask you about staging a home or about selling a home, you'd be pretty confident in how to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I have. It's interesting. I have guests on Mellow all the time. And they, when they come in, they're like, I am scared to death. I am so nervous. And, you know, and for me, it's like, <laughs> like right. I'm on the radio all day, every day. And right. to me, it's not a big deal. But mm. uh, the confidence is born from repetition and, and being good at, at what I do. And these people who have never been on the radio or maybe only done radio once or twice in their lives, of course they would be nervous, right? Because right. they're not confident in it so uh but i I found this article it's kind of a cool article it's on uh freemansperspective.com about confidence and courage listen to what he says about about the two says confidence is an opinion that you hold about yourself okay it would have to be wouldn't it you either believe that you are able to do something or you don't for instance uh water skiing if i if they put me behind a boat and said all right uh water ski I would not be confident in doing that because I am not a good, I've done it before, but I was terrible and I'm not mm-hmm. planning on doing it again. And uh, uh, So confidence is, if you know you can do something, if you're pretty sure you can do something, you, you're, you're confident about it, right? Right. You have that, you know, I can do it kind of attitude about it. And, and we all have things we're not confident about, right? Like water skiing. Yeah, <laughs> water I could not skiing. do that either. Uh, I went to Europe and, and uh, there were... The unfamiliar cities of people speaking a different language. My confidence level, I mean, I was with a tour group, so there was confidence that we weren't going to get lost. You know, we weren't going to get lost in middle Europe and, and, and nobody would talk to us. But I wasn't worried about that, but uh, I was not confident in how I behave there because, all right, what's the social norms? What if I do get lost and and, and the person I ask for directions from doesn't speak English and and uh, you know, and, and and you know, having a good marriage gives you some confidence. In Europe, part of my confidence uh, that I did have was, well, I always have my sweetheart with me, and, Aww, and she so she was by my side, right? So I was that, that instilled some confidence in me. I really like that angle. That's cute. Yeah, let's talk about courage, though. And and I love what listen to this paragraph. I love what he says about courage. And by the way, the author is uh, Paul. He does not give a last name. Paul from Free Man's Perspective. He says, courage is your ability to make decisions and hold to them in the face of fear. Courage is about what you do, not what you feel. Someone who feels no fear at all in the face of danger isn't brave. They're delusional. <laughs> and I, you know, my, my little uh, cohort here at work, Stockton, always makes fun of me because I'm not, I don't like snakes, right? Po- poisonous snakes. If they're not poisonous snakes, I'm not afraid of them. But uh, I'm, I, I don't like the idea of something that could kill me. I, I don't know. Maybe that's me. Maybe other people will be like, you're stupid or whatever. But the thought that if something, something is venomous, not poisonous, venomous enough to kill me, that makes me a little bit nervous, right? Rightly so. Yeah, and he, he makes fun of me about that. And 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 it's not that, I don't know. I, I, guess, I, I guess I don't have courage when it comes to snakes. But do I? I mean, I, if I had to capture a rattlesnake to save my life, to, you know, you've you got to capture one and get his venom or, or your wife's going to die or whatever. Yeah, I would do it, right? <laughs> yes. it's, it's, I would still be afraid. Yeah, but I would show the courage to okay. do that, and I like so I like what he said about about courage. It's if you're not afraid, then you're probably delusional. Right. Uh, you know, when it comes to something dangerous or scary. Yeah, you have to have a little bit of fear when you're stepping into something you mm-hmm. haven't done before, and that's what kind of gives you the courage to try. Like when you step out and try it, then you then you have the courage. Courage is this is another line from the article article or courage is being scared to death but saddling up anyway you know the old cowboy up thing right just just be brave and and do it mm-hmm. uh, how have you done in your life Mella, when it comes to doing things that you were scared of have, have you been able to do that yeah i really i think one recent example was doing your show for two weeks i was i was <laughs> scared i was like oh my gosh how am i gonna do this and then i just i think what you had said was preparation is what yeah. kind of keeps you away from the fear mm-hmm. if you're prepared mm-hmm. then you're not as afraid and then you can go forward with the courage yeah so. one of my favorite quotes if you are prepared you have no need to fear uh and 
I, I, I hope, and I think you did, and I don't know. I wasn't here, so I haven't heard all the shows. I've heard some of them but uh, uh, from when I was gone. But uh, I think you face the fear with preparation, which mm-hmm. is what I always told my daughters, right? Like, Dad, I'm really scared. This big test is coming up, and I, I'm, I'm going to fail. It's, it's a scary. It's a testing center. And, and I said, look, if, you, if you're prepared, if you know the material, there's no reason to be afraid. Yeah. Now, I remember in college a couple of times going into a big test and I was not prepared and I was scared, not maybe not scared for my life, but I was scared I was going to fail mm-hmm. for good reason. I wasn't prepared. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, hope I can fake my way through this. And yeah. Yeah. And then another so. thing that can help you with fear, too, is when you have the support. Like when I when I finally did leave my ex-husband, I had the support of my family. I was able to move in with them, kind of get back on my feet for a few months and then kind of press forward. I got a job. I hadn't had a job in a long, long time. That was scary. Oh, yeah. I had an I'm interview go, Getting for back into the workforce. Oh, yeah, man. and it was, it was terrifying. And then going back to college, I went back to college after I got divorced. That was scary. Just like just doing those things that you know are going to propel your life forward are important to do, even though it's scary. But if you don't make that step, then you're not going to be anywhere else than where you are right now. I'm, I'm curious what you, so in the job interview process, when you hadn't had a job for a long time because you were a stay-at-home mom, uh, did they ask you about the gap in employment? Said, look, you haven't had a job here for 10 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Why? Did, did they ask you about that? No, because I didn't really get like a real like office job. I started out um, at Star Nursery, actually. I didn't have to have a job because I had alimony and child support, but I wanted to kind of put myself out yeah, there. Yeah. So I just applied at Star Nursery. They said, what have you been doing? I'm like, oh, I've been raising kids. And this gal was also a stay-at-home mom that had gotten divorced and gone back into the workplace. So she was pretty understanding about that. So it wasn't a big deal. All right, let's talk about confidence a little bit. As we said earlier, if you feel like you can do something, you're probably confident. If you feel like you can do something or aren't prepared for something, you probably lack confidence. Mm. Uh, But uh, this author, Paul, says, you know, judging yourself is where confidence gets a little complicated. For example, many of us have vaguely decided not to acknowledge our abilities because we fear that people would dislike us for having them. Turning your back on your own ability might have made sense at one time in your life, such as when we were children, but we must always acknowledge acknowledge our abilities to ourselves even if we hide them from the world the opposite problem thinking you can do more than you actually can is usually only temporary once you try (laughs) and fail right exactly exactly. (laughs) i was was trying to think of some examples of something that you're good at that you were maybe too embarrassed to admit can you think of an example of that That you're too embarrassed to admit yeah you know when you're a kid and you're good at something and i remember when i was a kid first of all i was a really good speller I, I was, I, and I still am, and that's, I, I love that. Uh, and, and in fact, I was kind of hard on my kids about getting them to become good spellers, and they are now. But, but I pushed them probably harder than I should have because I was naturally a good speller. So I felt like if I'm a good speller, my kids better be good spellers, right? right. And I say, actually, if you'll ask my wife, I still uh, sometimes when texting or whatever with the kids or with her, I'll be like, oh, you spelled this wrong. And they don't want to hear it, of course. <laughs> Especially since it, a lot of times it's autocorrect and it wasn't even their fault. Yes. But, um, so what do you even know it all about is pretty much what it is because that's what you're good at. But yeah, kind of. So, about. but I do remember when I was a kid, and I was really good at spelling, and a couple of times, it was almost, it was almost like a party trick. My parents would, you know, they'd be having a get-together, and, and they'd march me, hey, can you spell, uh, you know, the acetaminophen real quick for these people? And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't know how to spell Leave me alone. I knew how to spell it. I just didn't want to do it. I see. I can't yeah. think of anything like that that you're good at that you don't want to do. That's, 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 I, that you stumped me. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. We'll, we'll figure it out as, as we go. The second part of confidence is having the ability. This part is simple but not easy. All types of ability are built by practice, from physical skills to making moral judgments. If you want ability, act. And as you continue to act, analyze your actions and improve them. Have you ever learned a new skill and um, at first you're awful and you're like, I can't do this. I'm, I'm never going to be any good at this. And then you do it again, and then you do it again, and you, and you get a little bit better, and you get a little bit. And then after you know a certain amount of time, you're actually getting proficient at it, and you're like, I can't believe that I didn't think I could do this because I I'm doing it. Yeah. And and then later on, you get really good at it, and you look back at when you were just okay at it, and you're like, I can't believe I was that terrible. And it's kind of that way with uh, 
for me with pickleball. We started playing pickleball, and uh, I, we, we played a lot early on. This was about five years ago. My wife and I started playing, and um, we were we thought we were pretty decent at it. Well, if I were to play me from back then, I would kill me right now. I, I would I would win probably eleven to nothing. Uh, you know, <laughs> maybe not that eleven to two or something because it's just practice. It's repetition. It's getting better at something. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I um actually probably about eight years ago, I was organizing full time. That's what I was doing. I had an organizing business. And I was working with this gal, and she's like, I think we're going to start staging. And I was like, wait, what? Staging? What? I don't know if I can do that. And I was actually really scared, and she kind of, like, pushed me into doing it. And then as I started doing it, then I gained more confidence, and people are like, oh, wow, this looks really good. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that yeah. does. I can yeah. trust my instincts on where something should be placed and what it should look like and how you should move through the room with the items. So that's kind of something where I was really hesitant to start. And I was like, I can't believe I'm going to be making money doing this yeah seriously. you know what i mean someone's gonna pay me to do this am i actually good enough to do that like and with organizing because i had wanted to do organizing probably 25 years ago and my ex-husband told me he's like you can't even keep our house clean mind you we had six little kids <laughs> how can you organize for other people so then when i married my new husband he's like yeah if that's what you want to go do do it and then right. I got the confidence, and then people were paying me. I've made up to $150 an hour organizing for people. Wow. So, awesome. so you How's can, your blog coming on that, by the way? Zero blogs. <laughs> I always, like, have great ambition, and uh, then I just have a really terrible follow-through on some things like okay. that. That's all right. But. That's all right. So uh, recently my wife brought up the topic of painting. Uh, I... Not 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 painting your house, but actually painting pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so, Melo, I'm good at a lot of things. I I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a writer. I'm a pretty good writer. I do all right on radio. Uh, I for stupid reasons, I, I'm good at sports trivia and music trivia. <laughs> I don't know why I got good at those two particular things, but uh, so and, and you know, I'm not a bad pickleball player. But I got to tell you, when it comes to painting. I am awful. I'm ter I mean, I can't draw. I can't paint. I can't. I'm just not an artist in that in that arena. So my wife the other day, my, and my dad, who is 89 years old, bless his heart, he is he is becoming a painter. He's actually pretty good at it, right? And so my wife is like, hey, maybe me and you and your dad should take an art class together, a, a, a painting, an oil painting class. Hmm. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what? I said, me painting? She said, well, your dad can do it. And he, he never really painted his whole life until he retired. I said, yeah, but I, I don't. And she's like, come on, anybody can do it. And I was like, okay, hold on right there. She, when she said anyone can do it, that, that is almost discounting uh, people who are, have skill at something. If, uh, you know, I, I've been a sports broadcaster, Mellow, for 31 years, and I get this all the time. Oh, what a fun job. I could do that. Mm. I hear that all the time. And you know what? You could sit down and talk about a game with the microphone on, and anybody that follows sports could do that. But to be good at it, it actually requires some skill and mm -hmm. some uh, some effort and, and practice and uh, so that drives me crazy. So when and when she said that about painting, I'm like, you know, you're kind of discounting the people who are good at painting to say that anyone can do it if, if they take a class or two. I cannot paint. And I can tell you, and everybody, there might be people listening right now going, dude, you can, you can do No, I cannot paint. I am no good at visual art. That's, okay, so I, I have to agree with your wife here because oh. I am also not artistic. I can't even draw stick figures very well. Oh, yeah, me too. That's okay, exactly okay. it. Okay, but I got invited to a paint night mm -hmm. and it was so fun. Actually, I'm going to bring you the picture. I'm going to gift you the picture. <laughs> it's so pretty. You want me to put it up in the studio? Yeah, yeah, you can put it up in the studio. And it's like a scene with like a palm tree. I They, they they step you through each little process. But I've been to those types of classes, and everyone else's turns out great, and mine looks like somebody vomited on the paint, the, the easel. That's because you have no confidence. You I have no get, talent. That's what I have. I it's, disagree. <laughs> I think that you need to go to a paint night, and you need to try. It's not. It, I'll go. 
I, I've done, like I said, I've done it before. I've been to art classes. I've been to workshops where they quote unquote teach you how to paint, and mine always turn out awful. Your attitude determines your altitude. <laughs> is what I learned when I was a teenager, and it's mm. got me through a lot. So your attitude about it is causing your paintings to not be as good. I absolutely 100% wholeheartedly disagree with you. Okay, well, you're incorrect. I don't think attitude has anything to do with whether or not it I can does, paint. It does, because in your mind, you're telling yourself you can't paint. But so I, by it, telling it, yourself... It's not that I don't try. I try really hard. I a, just can't do it. It's, it's a, terrible. No, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that you can't paint. <laughs> you are prophesying to yourself that I can't paint. So you uh, are telling yourself that. So you're, you're doing what you tell yourself. Uh, I, I disagree. Well, disagree. we'll find out when you change your attitude, if you change your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 58. I think I know myself by now, and I know that I can't do that. I, I just, it's not my thing. And, but, you know, I don't consider it a handicap. I don't say, hey, I can't do that, so I suck. I'm good at other things. My wife can't do, she's terrible at math. My wife is terrible at math. I am terrible at math, but that doesn't mean if, that. If I were to say, what is 12 times 16, my wife would be like, you better give me a calculator because I don't, I ain't ever going to figure that out until you give me a calculator. <laughs> I'm good at I could do that in my head right now. It's a piece of cake. Uh, and and that just happened to be something I'm good at. She's never going to be good at math. And she could be good at math. <sighs> she could. Mm. I, I disagree with your um, stance on this. Mm. I think you could, but you'd have to have the desire. You'd have to want to. You'd have to shift your attitude. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I don't want to be good at math, and I'm not good at math. And I don't... That is certainly part of it, the desire, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's a big part of it. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's why when, when our kids were little, and you probably did this too, I, I exposed my kids to a bunch of different things. Do you want, you know, I, I had them play baseball and soccer and football, and I had them, you know, try karate and all these different things we had them try because I wanted them to find something not only that they were good at, but that they wanted to do. Agreed. And, and and that to me that was important because I wanted to, them to figure out what it is they wanted in life and and um, you know they were bad at some things and they were good at some other things and mm -hmm. and and that's kind of how I think a, a, it's a parent's duty right to give your kids those opportunities to see what it is they're good at and they like right and let them have something that they can excel at and have that confidence building experience that's that word again confidence mm -hmm. yeah I'm throwing it in there for you but my <laughs> my parents let me try art when I was a little kid and I was one of those that I would come home look mommy look what I drew in kindergarten today and she would go oh that's so nice and she would put it on the fridge with the magnet and <laughs> and later that day I would find it in the trash because it was terrible oh, it was awful my mom wasn't an awful person. My art was that bad. No, that, that caused you childhood trauma. No, and that's, no, That's no. around your disdain for no. art. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got to get a weather check. We'll be back with more. I want to talk a little bit about Kamala Harris and her interview last night on CNN. They did not ask hard questions. She did say, hey, I'm, I haven't changed a bit, and yet she's changed her stance on just about everything so that she can get elected. So we'll talk about that and more. When we come back, this is the Andy Griffin Show. Wake up with the news and information you can trust. This is the Andy Griffin Show on News Radio 890, 92.5 KDXU, Southern Utah's News Talk Leader. Welcome back. It is Labor Day weekend, the beginning of it, at least if uh, you can get through Friday, right? A lot of you are like, oh, I got eight hours to go or 12 hours or whatever it is. But yeah, we're getting close to Labor Day weekend. I will not be here on Monday uh, and uh, neither will Stockton. So we'll run our holiday logs and our holiday schedule here on KDXU on Monday. I know for it's kind of funny. The, some retired people, my dad was, was telling me this. He's like, it's weird when holidays come around because... It's just another day to us. Mm. The only way they know it's a holiday a lot, a lot of times is they'll go to listen to our show and it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's like, oh, today must be a holiday. Okay, then. That's so. true. That's true. If you don't have anywhere you have to go, then you're like, oh, wait. But uh, So no program on Monday, but next week we do have some uh, fun guests. Marianne Hamilton will join me on Tuesday. Wednesday, Dr. David Blodgett from the Washington County, uh, or the uh, I guess it's the five counties, uh, the Southwest Utah Public Health Department. Uh, on uh, Thursday the 5th, we will hear from 
uh, Chief Williams from the uh, Washington City Police Chief. He's been on only one time before, so I'm, it'll be fun to have him on and talk about some of the uh, some of the issues facing Washington City when it comes to policing the area. Mm. There is an area, there was an area, is maybe still an area that is, uh, I want to put this delicately, uh, an area where there is a propensity for people taking drugs and stuff in oh. Washington City. And I know the city has been hyper aware of trying to uh, clean that up. But, I mean, you know, this is USA. You can't just take the Gestapo and go in and say, everybody out, you know, and throw them all in jail. That's not how it works here in America. But I know, that, I know they've been focusing hard on uh, making making sure that stuff is taken care That's of. That's important. Uh, the second week of September is uh, the week of 9-11. And so we're going to do some stuff uh, surrounding 9-11 and, and uh, you know, commemorating. Uh, it's actually been 23 years mm. since uh, the uh, Twin Towers went That's down. So. And it's the Dixie Days, too, that week. Dixie Days coming up as well. Michelle Randall will be on. We'll also hear from Steve Dunham from the school district. McCray Hepler will talk a little bit about the Black Desert and the big mm. golf tournament coming and a lot of stuff planned for you next week as well. I have a guest that I, I haven't talked to him yet, but I want to have him on because he was in a position of prominence uh, when it came to uh, security and 9-11. Uh, it's a guy I I think will do the show, but he's retired and he could be out of town. So, but I'm working on getting him secured for uh, the 11th. That would be so, nice. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, last night, uh, Kamala Harris, who is running for president of the United States, was on CNN, her first public interview since accepting the nomination to be the Democratic representative uh, uh, for the upcoming election. Um, one of the things that Kamala said, this is crazy to me, and I talked with Jimmy about this a little bit this morning, but Kamala Harris said, you know what, when we inherited the economy of the United States three and a half years ago, it was a mess. We had we worked so hard in fixing the economy that Donald Trump broke. Oh my and I was like, are you serious? <laughs> because I think every American... Not think I know every American could go right now and take a laundry, maybe or rather not a laundry, a grocery list of food from 2016, or rather 2020, and now and compare it, and it would be, yeah, it would be very different. I mean, just look at the price of gasoline, look at the price of houses, look at the price to that for them to say the economy was broken and they fixed it is. It's just a flat-out lie. I know, but people just believe what people tell them sometimes. Well, and that's the thing that scares me, Mello, is there are people out there who aren't, and I was maybe a lot of my life not into politics. And so if someone would come on TV and say this, you know, I, I don't know we'll fix the economy, I would be like, did they? Huh. Can I Can I add a little... Um a little conspiracy theory just <laughs> everybody angle. everybody get out your tinfoil mm -hmm. hat okay so Mello, with, go with for the it. mandela effect have you heard of the mandela effect mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. where they you you remember something from like your childhood and now everywhere you go to look it's different mm -hmm. um fruit of the loom had fruit a little cornucopia behind their fruit basket on yeah. like their shirts and their underwear and all yeah. of their products, right? Right. If you go and look now... There's no cornucopia. There's no cornucopia. And they said... There never was. There never was. And the conspiracy theorist on that says that what is happening is the government is testing out different items to see what they hmm. can do to reshape what the past was and see how many people will believe it moving forward, then it never happened if they tweak one little thing. So I've, I've actually heard, my... I've heard this before, this, this conspiracy theory. Uh, my question is, how do we, unless we took pictures of things like the Fruit of the Loom logo from 2000 or from 1980 or whatever, how do we know it was in fact, there was in fact that cornucopia in there? Right. I, somebody actually, I did see a picture of it. It a was picture? a shirt that somebody mm -hmm. had in like their closet or their grandma's closet and it had the cornucopia. Really? But if you went on the website, then Fruit of the Loom actually denies that they ever had it. Like they've actually changed their history on it too is what I understood when I 
mm. was doing all my magnificent research on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the place where most people actually go to do research mm -hmm. is uh, online and... Uh, yeah. All right. Mandela effect is, is, yeah. Why is it? I mean, it, it's real, right? We remember things as being, you know, uh, do you remember Shaggy from Scooby-Doo with the big Adam's apple? Yes. Uh, so do tons. But in reality, Shaggy never had an Adam's apple. I think that's, I think that they've, they've altered things. I do. I really think that. And then Richard Simmons with his, 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 um, Thing around his head, his sweatband. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. they say he never had the sweatband. Just stupid oh, things. Oh no, I'm not buying that one. I no. remember it. I know. And then also Publishers Clearinghouse that there was never um, that guy from what is he from? He's from the Johnny Carson. Oh, Ed McMahon. Ed yeah. McMahon. They said he never went around and gave out prizes. Well, I don't know if he went around, but he talked about it. No, I, he I, mean, would be I saw the, the commercials. Yeah, he would be at the door knocking. They're saying that never happened. Hmm. So just dumb things like that, just and I think it's just messing with people to see what they can actually get away with, so they can take it to the next level. Interesting is my opinion, but I am a conspiracy theorist at heart. One of those out there is uh, about Jif peanut butter. Mm -hmm. uh, people swear it used to be Jiffy with an F Y on the end, and they swear remembering the jar that said Jiffy on it. But the company Jif says we were never Jiffy. And you're confusing us with Skippy. Mm. And uh, that's, the thing about, that's the thing about memory, right? Or going, yeah, I remember it being that way. And Do then, you? And then Tostino's Pizza is now Totino's. No, it's Totino's. always been Totino's. You can't, that one I will not buy. It was always Totino's. People said it wrong. I remember. Do you? Well, yes. you spell, so maybe you're correct. Yes, I'm a speller nut. So <laughs> I, I'm a spelling nut. Uh, all right, back to the Kamala Harris interview. Uh how about her policy flip-flopping? For instance, the fracking. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, so, some of the other things that she clearly, I mean, the border wall. I, she talks about, I've always been behind keeping the law at the border. Well, the law is that people, they're not allowed to immigrate without legally doing it. It's against the law to come in the United States uh, by just walking across the border. That's why they have border crossings. You can't do that. Uh, that's why they have all the checkpoints and everything. Well, Kamala has been the border czar for the last three and a half years. She said on CNN last night, she said, I've always been for keeping the law at the border, for <laughs> obeying the law at the border. And I don't know how the commentators on CNN kept a straight face. I mean, you just giggled. I, when I first, I'm like, are you kidding me? I know. Are you joking right now? Yeah, I did hear that the governor of California dropped off a whole busload of immigrants on her front yard. I saw <laughs> a video of that on the TV. Uh, now, uh, last night, I, I guess it was pointed out during the debate that um, Harris and Trump have never met face to face. Really? They have never actually met. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, one of the interviewers asked Kamala Harris, uh, said, so... Donald Trump says you're only black when it's convenient to be black because she is uh, she's part Indian, part white, part black. And so she pulls the black card when it, it is advantageous to her. Mm -hmm. When they asked her about it, Harris said, and I quote, same old playbook. Next question, please. Oh, so she's just avoiding the question. So instead of answering the question, because the interviewer actually did a pretty good job of saying, how do you respond to that? Is it true? She was like, same old playbook, next question. I'm not going to talk about it. Wow. I hate that. That's evading the question. That's, you know, going going yeah, outside of what question. you're supposed to be. Yeah. So, uh, and then they did ask Tim Walls, her running mate, about his... Uh, about his military service and the, the untrue oh. statements that he made. Uh, and in 2018, this is a quote from Mr. Walls. We can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. Well, he never actually carried a weapon in war. And he says that was a misquote, an out-of-context quote, that even though he said that I carried in war, he says that they're misquote that they're they're not misquoting me. They're taking me out of context. I'd like to see the original context. I don't know how you can take. I carried those weapons of war or in war. 
I don't know how you can take that out of context. No. There, there is no out of context. You said no. that. Unless he was like a pilot and flew them into war. Yeah, and he wasn't a pilot. Oh, so. then I don't know. Yeah. So Anyway, uh, you can read more about Kamala. I, I think there's a pretty good article on the Deseret.com. Uh, the title of it is Five Takeaways from Kamala Harris's First Sit-Down Interview. Uh, I feel like some of the Salt Lake media, in, in particular, former conservative sites like uh, well, the KSL TV and the DeseretNews.com have gotten a little bit liberal. But this is a pretty good take by the author of how Kamala kind of did a little dodging in, in, in trying to get away hmm. from uh, the truth. So yeah. uh, the name of the name, of the, again, of the article is Five Takeaways from Kamala Harris's First Sit-Down Interview by Suzanne Bates at Deseret.com. We'll be right back. All the latest news, weather, traffic, and sports, just like you like them. You're waking up with The Andy Griffin Show on News Radio 890, 92.5 KDXU, Southern Utah's news talk leader. Welcome back, 9.51 on KDXU. Holy smokes, the hour went fast, didn't it, Melly? Yes, it did. It went fast. Let's uh, go to the phone lines. Doug has been waiting patiently for his comments. Hi, Doug. Thanks for calling. Hi, Andy. How you doing this morning? I am great. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Wonderful, wonderful. It's good when the temperature's coming down just a little bit. We'll, we'll take it. But, uh, anyway, but, uh, Kamala Harris, I think it's kind of interesting, Trump. Name so it uses that um, calm comrade. I, I'm sure he's not listening, but just an idea. Just call her Conrad, or how about Con for short? Con, <laughs> yeah. for, con, con for con artist or Con for communist? But uh, yeah, she, she sure is the flip flopper, like you were just talking about. I, I agree with that. There was a there was a song in the eighties called Karma Chameleon, and I I to me that one fits Ka- Kamala the Chameleon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the whole thing here with all of this very disturbing to me. It's just uh, yeah, very and very very scary, very scary. I don't know, if, Doug. I don't know if you got to hear it yesterday on uh, on the Clay and Buck show. Clay, in this first half hour of his show. Uh, listed, I think it was eight questions that the CNN reporter should ask Kamala but won't ask her. Mm. That was so good. And uh, I know I, if you if you go to clayandbuck.com, you can find that list. But it's pretty pretty uh, pretty well done. Asking her about her flip flopping, asking her about sleeping with a guy she's married to when he was married to someone else, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, yeah, they've got. Oh, I think we lost Doug. You there, Doug? Yeah, I'm just coming up through the gap here at Snow Canyon Parkway. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we got you now. Yep. Oh, okay, good. I'm just coming out of it. Anyway, yeah, they've got a whole list of all kinds of issues about her from her past, et cetera. But the, the difficult things, the mainstream media just covers it up, you know, and, and uh, it elevates her up. You know, she does have a nice smile, you know, I think. But uh, yeah. it's what's underneath that smile. The person under that mask is is pretty scary. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I really do. And, and I'm scared for our country if this if this person actually wins. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Yesterday, the, the gang from Venezuela, the MS-13 there in Aurora, Colorado, you know, takes over a hotel. And the liberal governor tells the staff in that local area the uh, the law enforcement that all oh, you're doing that's just your imagination yeah. you, you know but that's that's the kind of thing that i can see this could you know pretty soon just start to multiply all over america you know where we we really will that day that we need to have our have weapons to defend ourselves is becoming more and more, I can see that in the near future, unfortunately, to come true. And we need to remember, Tim Walls let what happened in Minnesota during the BLM riots, he let it happen. And then Kamala Harris donated money to bail those people who were rioting out of jail. I don't think you need to know anything more about Kamala Harris and Tim Walls than, than that fact right there. Except just to get it out, let the people that are unfortunately a little ignorant that are looking at the nice smile and the happy this and that to know who she really is. It's all the best we could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, yeah. Doug. Good to talk to you. Okay, I appreciate sir. you calling, man. It is at 9.55 on uh, KDX. It's funny. I, during during the uh, commercial break, I started looking into your little Mandela effect uh, yes. thing. It, it, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, like, does Mickey Mouse wear suspenders? I thought in the beginning he did. We all thought he did. He never had suspenders on. Never. I disagree yeah. venomously on that. <laughs> did you say venomously? Yes. Or vehemently? Venomously, because you Venom- hate snakes. Yeah. Are you going to bite me? <laughs> Maybe, with my words. <laughs> oh, man. Some of them are funny. If you build it, they will come. was never actually said in Field of Dreams. If it was, it's what? If you build it... He will come, not they will come. Mm. I know we're mincing words here, but still, yeah. that's one of those things. Uh, a lot of people, so an iconic moment in American history was the space shuttle Challenger blowing up. Mm. And a lot of people swear that was in 84 or 85. Another part of that conspiracy is that they never actually died, that it was just made yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> it was in 1986. I know this for a fact because I was a missionary in New Jersey when it happened. Yeah, and I was, I was in, in New Jersey in 1986. So, yeah. how, how old were you in 86? That's a good question. That'd be a math question. I was born in 75. Okay, you were, so you were 11. Yeah, yeah that's, that's easy math. <laughs> and maybe the biggest one. Uh, okay, not really the biggest one, but the Joan Jett in the song "I Love Rock and Roll," iconic. I love rock and roll, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, everyone swears the original version said I saw him standing there by the record machine. It never said that. It was, I saw him dancing there. No. By the record machine. No. Even yeah. Britney Spears' song that she did of it says standing, I swear. <laughs> it's not dancing. Well, maybe that's the problem. Britney screwed it up. <laughs> because I could see that happening. I could see Britney screwing it up. Oh, that's funny. So, okay, I'm going to ask you one last question. We're running out of time. Okay. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise, beginning of Risky Business, right? Comes out mm-hmm. in his socks with underwear and a button-down shirt and, mm-hmm. a, and a pretend microphone. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he or was he not wearing sunglasses? Yes, he was because they popped down on his nose. Yes, he was. Actually, no, he was not. What? So when the movie poster came out for that show, they digitally added sunglasses of him in that pose. But if you watch the actual scene of him singing uh, old-time rock and roll in, in his underwear yeah. and his shirt, no sunglasses. Really? None at all, yeah. So, oh, so that's not really a Mandela effect. That's just a memory effect. Yeah. It's, well, that <laughs> some would say that is the Mandela effect. You're remembering wrong. No. Did Febre- does Febreze have uh, the double E in it? Febreze? Yes. No, it does not. It's what? F-E-B-R-E-Z-E. It always has been. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't kind know. Of, we could do this all day long. This is kind know. of fascinating, that's right? That's interesting what you remember. Yeah, and Fruit really Loops. Happened. You know how they spell fruit and Fruit Loops? F R O O T. I think that's right. People swear it was F R U I T at the beginning. I don't. I don't. I think that was O O. Well, it had to be because there's no fruit in Fruit Loops, right? <laughs> it's sugar <laughs> and high fructose corn syrup and all that it's stuff. True. So, all right, we're running out of time. Uh, one innovation I I don't think I pointed out on the show before. One innovation in my trip to Europe that I found quite fascinating and maybe needs to be not maybe does need to be adopted here in the United States. So you, you know you get the water bottles or the soda bottles with the with the cap. You unscrew the cap. Mm-hmm. In the United States, you unscrew the cap all the way. You have cap in one hand, bottle in the other. Mm-hmm. In Europe, they have made it in the European Union. They've made it a law that when you unscrew the cap, it has to have one little plastic piece stuck to it, so the cap cap doesn't come all the way off in your hand. It stays with the bottle. Mm. I think that is brilliant. I think, I, I mean, it, it is literally a lateral as far as price-wise. It doesn't cost any more to do that. You just don't close the loop all the way on when you mm-hmm. open it. And I, it took two days to get used to that. But after the two days, I was like, this is brilliant because they don't have little caps to lids all over their cities right. because what do you do it when your bottle's done you know you yeah. or, or 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 you're drinking and you drop it or whatever and no choking hazard either for kids yeah, exactly i think it's brilliant so great idea all right we are out of time got it got to go thanks for listening today Melo. thanks for your help as always <laughs> Thank you.